So, hello and welcome back uh, to the fourth lesson. We are still under the uh, section about listing and purchase agreements here in this 30-hour post-licensing course. Uh, we have started talking about the purchase agreement and some of the uh, requirements of the purchase agreement. Now I want to talk a little bit about the IARs, the Indiana Association of Realtors, their forms that they have, all right? By now you are familiar with zip forms and you all understand how to, to operate zip forms and all of that, but uh, currently here is like the list of forms that we have and this by no means is the exhaustive list. Um, I just wanted to highlight some of the common forms that you will see being used in here um, so that we could go over them, like the acknowledgement of the offer. This is to ensure that if there's ever a buyer or a buyer's agent that is kind of worried that maybe their offer wasn't presented, this will force the seller to at least acknowledge that he saw it, or it actually, it doesn't really do that. What it actually does is it verifies that the listing agent did present the offer to the seller. Uh, highly possible the seller chooses to not respond, and unfortunately, we cannot make the seller respond. So make sure you understand kind of what I just said. Uh, this is an offer that would then be worst case scenario acknowledged by the listing agent that they did in fact present the offer. All right, it doesn't necessarily have to be signed by the seller saying that they saw it. Um, the seller could have told the listing agent, I don't want to see anything under $100,000. So there is that potential. So this acknowledgement of presented offer is actually going to come from the listing agent that says either yes I did present it or B I had a reason not to and here's the reason and the proof that I was not supposed to present it. Then we have some addendums here. We've got an addendum to the listing contract. Remember an addendum, literally good way to represent this right here, means to add an addendum means to add words that are not going to normally be involved as opposed to the word amendment here, which would be to amend words that have already been talked about. So we have an addendum to the listing contract. We've got an addendum to our inspection response. We've got an addendum to a purchase agreement. So there are many other addendum, addendums, I did, just did not pull them all in, all right? Uh, if there's a personal property that's going to be transferred, we have a separate agreement that we could, we could use outside of the purchase agreement. We got these things called the estimated closing costs. This would be so that your buyer could get some kind of idea when he makes an offer on a property what it's going to actually cost him. Now, if he's getting a loan, he should be getting a loan estimate form, which is probably a much better answer than us. Here's the buyer's agency, which we haven't really talked about yet. Um, we have the inspection response. We've got a buyer's pre-qualification form. Here's those new COVID stuff that came out during that issue that allowed that in there. Obviously the counter offer, the escalation clause and an escalation clause works, remember, like I'm gonna put an offer in and we will increase until we get to our top number. Um, so it's sort of a lazy man's way to do some kind of quick auction. Uh, that's the way I look at it because it always, well, it's 110, now it's 120, now it's 130, now it's 140. The limited agency agreement, obviously that's a form you would use. Uh, there is that mutual release that we talked about. And we've got one for the buyer, we've got one for the seller, and we've got one between the buyer and the seller from the purchase agreement. All right. Option, you guys remember what the only special thing about an option is? 
I think we talked about this. An option, remember, is the only unilateral contract we use in real estate uh, where only one person has to act. Now, we do have two purchase agreements here, and I'm assuming that by now you guys understand the difference between these two that you would use, all right? An improved one with a house, an unimproved is without a house, or a better name for this could be vacant lot. We've got the seller's net to proceeds. A lot of listing agents use this. And then we've got the seller's inspection response. So those are just some of the forms that are actually used in the IAR. Now, if you are a member of the Indiana Association of Realtors, which you probably are, hence this is why you're doing this course, you actually must abide by their rules and regulations, which say that if they have a form that you must in fact use their form, all right? Unless your other form is written by an attorney or is required and there is no subsequent form, like maybe a land contract, okay? There is a whole section on the new clauses of the purchase agreement. And what I really wanna do is I'm gonna stop right here and go over the new 2020 purchase agreement and some of the changes in the forms so that you can see them, all right? So hold on, we're gonna come right back with that.